Welcome to Radiant Pearls Ministries. I'm Justina Sanchez. And I'm Jeanette Bradley. Today we want to welcome the wonderful Gina Marie Sadler. Oh, thank you. And I'm honored to be here. Amen. Partnering with your ministry for such a time. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. What a pleasure it is to have you. So around here, we do have a bit of a, a sweet tooth. And so we want to start right out with what is your favorite dessert? I would say my Ben and Jerry's Americone ice cream mm -hmm. because I get a variety. I have my cookie, I have my caramel, I have my vanilla, and I'm good to go. Yummy. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for that too. I agree in Jesus' I, name. <laughs> I like that. Will you tell us about yourself? Uh, well, uh, my husband and I, we uh, partner in ministry. Uh, we have been married 26 years in January. I have a prayer ministry here in San Diego. Uh, God has called me to release the sound of prayer, amen, his heartbeat for the kingdom and a passion, amen, and to just give that passion for prayer. Well, we don't see prayer as just a job, amen, but it's more of an adventure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you That's share so with good. us, um, mm -hmm. why is it important to pray and why one should pray? The, the key, prayer, is, there are levels of prayer. And there are places that we sit when it comes to prayer. The scripture said we sit in Christ Jesus, amen, receiving all spiritual blessings. But the purpose of prayer goes beyond communication. It moves us into communion with God. So Jesus was always caught praying to the Father, amen. And he is our example, amen. And he, even now he sits, what, up there on his throne on the right hand of the Father, what, interceding, amen. So there is a pattern and blueprint in the kingdom Amen. Where God wants us to, to, uh, to mimic it, to mirror it. And so I believe that God is calling for prayer because prayer, amen, brings us together with him where we not only communicate needs, but we experience God through prayer. Mm -hmm. But well, how do you know though, if God is actually hearing your prayers and answering them? Okay. Well, the scripture says, let's go to the scripture. I'm, I'm going to summarize the scripture. Amen. Uh, first John five and 14. What does it say? This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, what? He hears us. Mm -hmm. And if we know he hears us, what? Then we know we have the petition that we have asked of him. And then you have what? Uh, John 15, it talks about if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can have what you ask. Mm -hmm. So it's all about praying the will of God mm -hmm. because God hears his, his will, amen? Yeah. And he answers what? According to his will. Why? Because his will is his way and his way is his word. And so we have that confidence in him that if he, if we're praying his heart, he responds to his heart mm -hmm. that he has given us. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that um, prayers can be hindered in any way? Absolutely. Um, we can't go into everything. I would just encourage people to do study the scriptures and, and search them out. Amen. But yes, it could be because of sin. There's very, uh, there are different things that can hinder prayer. It could be sin. Amen. It could be a transgression, which is different. That's more of an offense. So the sin is more personal. Mm. It's, it's a personal, usually personal thing. Uh, transgression is, is usually a, an offense that involves someone else. Okay. And then you have iniquity, which can involve uh, ancestors. It could be a, a family bloodline and they're usually attached to curses. So there's different things that can hinder and it could either be by design a plan of God. And let me give an example of that. When I say a plan of God, remember when he heard that uh, Lazarus was, you know, dead. Okay. And he, and he took his time to get to Lazarus. Amen. But I'm, I'm going to fast forward. He talked about how when he, when he got there, he said, father, I know you always hear me. He had already prayed. He already prayed because God was leading Jesus, that humanity side of Christ was leading an example. He said, I'm not saying this because I don't believe you and I know you haven't heard me, but for those that are around. So sometimes God would allow prayers to be delayed or hindered. And I won't say per se hindered, but delayed because of others. They need to see something. God wants to bring revelation. God wants to show them a more excellent way. And God wants to increase their faith. Amen. So there are different purposes and reasons why uh, a prayer may be hindered or delayed. Amen. Uh, but God will never deny his word. Amen. Right. So you were talking about like uh, something along your ancestors, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, mm -hmm. that line. Mm -hmm. uh, so if somebody's listening right now and mm -hmm. watching and they're, they're going, well, what does that mean? And mm -hmm. what do I do about mm -hmm. that? Okay. All right. So when I, when I say that, the iniquity refers to uh, some lawlessness or some things, and some things that are a violation of God's law, some unrighteous or some wickedness. And there's some things that have been that are attached to our bloodline and our family. 
Amen. That, are, that will cause a hindrance. Amen. When you look at, let me, let me give you a scripture so you won't think I'm just making this up, you know, from my head. <laughs> and it's good because people, you have to give them the word. Amen. Right. Because the word will reveal. Amen. There's That's the right. hidden word, but then there's the revealed word. And God always wants us to grow in the knowledge of, our, of the truth. God, he said, thy word is truth right now. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so he talks about in Psalm 85, our truth springs up. It produces, it brings forth. Amen. And then righteousness looks down. So when when, you talk, when I talk about iniquity and unrighteousness, you look at Leviticus 2640. You mind if I read that? No. Go. Leviticus 2640. I try and keep my scriptures already in front of me. <laughs> or did I get it? Let me go to Leviticus 26 and 40. I'm going to read it. Uh, and it'll give you some insight on what I mean by that. Because, and then I'm going to give you my testimony that's going to confirm whenever God deals with me, especially when he deals with us, especially when we're intercessors, if we hear something, we need to make sure it lines up with the logos mm -hmm. because the rhema will the logos will confirm the rhema mm -hmm. because when you hear voices, it could be your voice. It could be the enemy's voice. It could be something from the soulish realm. So if it doesn't line up with the logos, it's not from God mm -hmm. because right. the logos doesn't change. It's absolute. It doesn't, it, it can't, it can't, you know, be uh, uh, manipulated. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we hear, we, we think God has said, it has to, we have to find it in the word. And that's what I do. Yeah. That's, that's why it's so important mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're constantly in our word so yes. that we know, yeah. we know what's in there. We yes. don't want to believe the lies. We don't want to, yes. you don't know what's in there. So right. you may fall for anything. Yeah. Right. So it's important to constantly be in your word. Because he, he is the word. Yeah. He is the word. Yeah. So 26 and 40, it says, but if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me and that they also have walked contrary to me and that I have also walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemy. If their uncircumcised heart are humbled and they accept their guilt, then I will remember my covenant. Hmm. So there's some things that our fathers and forefathers have done that had, remember he, in the word, he says that he visits the third and fourth generation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there's some things that have there that our fathers have transgressed against the law that we are suffering for, or we are reaping because of that. And so we have to go and it's, it becomes a legal situation or a judicial si situation where we have to go before the king and plead our case. Right. Why? Because the ac accuser of the brethren, the enemy accuses us day and night. Mm -hmm. And so we have this crime or this, this felony, as you say, a misdemeanor that we have to go to court on our behalf and say, and plead our case and let the Holy Spirit, amen, plead our case through us and have and ask the courts to have mercy, amen, and to forgive us for ourselves and for the, uh, our fathers. I'll never forget the Lord um, had showed me some time ago, uh, I was with my grandfather, my grandfather's dead now. Mm -hmm. And we were getting some things out of the cab. We had taken an Uber or something. When we got to the house, my grandfather looked at me and said, I curse you. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. And so there was, there's a well-known uh, man of God in, the, in New York. He was coming to the city. Somebody invited me. I went. And that night, I really didn't know why God was leading me there. But then the man of God said, I'm going to be here another day in Escondido. So I said, I need to go because there's something. When God deals with me about going somewhere, there got to be something for me. Right. And he called me up and he said, there's a curse that was spoken over you. And it's hindering your prayers and it's hindering your ministry. And so he began to pray, but I had a responsibility and a role to play as well mm -hmm. because I'm the one involved in that bloodline. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I went home. See, I, when God reveals something to us, we have a responsibility and a role Amen. to play. Amen. We can't use excuses and we, I can't blame my grandfather. Right. I have to say God has revealed that to me because he wants something done. What in the earth? God wants them done. Right. So God was showing me now, you got to sever that thing by the blood, the word, and the spirit. So I began to arrest that ill-spoken word and reverse the effects of that word that was against me, evil. Praise God. Yeah, Amen. I'm excited. <laughs> when I did, that thing broke and my ministry opened up. So Amen. God began to show me in his word that mm -hmm. some of us are being hindered, some of our prayers, some of our ministry, some of our family success because of things that have been spoken over us. Legally, the devil has been given access to us mm -hmm. because of the sin. It, it gives like Adam and Eve get access to us and being being an Adamic nature was it was by default. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
no, no, really doing of our own, but because we had inherited it. Does yep. that make sense? Yep. So let me leave that there because I can go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's break that down yeah. though. Okay. okay. So, yes. so you talked about the courts. So we're yes. talking about the courts of mm -hmm. heaven yes. Yes. And, and how you plead your case, yes. which in the word of God says confess. Yes. So will you walk somebody through the simple steps to, to how that looks? Yes. Once we acknowledge something and we go to the throne of grace boldly, Mm -hmm. That we may obtain what mercy mm -hmm. yeah. the court. The, you go when you go to court. It says the mercy of the court. You know, well God will begin to take that thing and, and wipe it out and, and blot it out like He did on the cross, right? He said He blotted out our transgressions and iniquity. He mm -hmm. blotted them out. He made an open shame of what the enemy. He spoiled principalities and powers and embarrassed the devil. Mm -hmm. Like the devil embarrassed us in the Garden of Eden when we sinned and took partake of, partook of sin. He said, now I'm going to embarrass the devil. So God will embarrass him once we expose and we admit to the crime. Mm -hmm. Yep, bring mm -hmm. it to light. So bring we can it to light. that case out and throw the evidence out, right? And mm -hmm. expunge that off. So you go to God and you say, look, God, I have sinned against you. Admit it. And we have. We all fall short. Mm -hmm. There's nobody exempt from that. Right. And say, my parents might have did it ignorantly as well. Right. We can do things ignorantly. We don't always know what yeah. we say. Yeah. When they crucified Christ, they said, let his blood be upon us and what? And our children. There was a curse spoken. Yeah. And so God, we go to God. We say, Lord, you have revealed to me something that was hidden. Hidden sin, secret sin. Mm -hmm. Now I'm responsible for what you have revealed to me. And I take ownership as a steward over that revelation. And I bring it to the courts of God, the mercy seat. Mm. And I'm asking you to forgive me. And he said, what? Well, I am faithful and just to what? Forgive you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And to not remember that. To totally rid us of that. So you go before the Lord in humility. You admit the mistakes, the iniquity, the sin, unrighteousness, whatever it was. Yeah. And God, we, he releases us. And now the enemy no longer has. And we seal that up. You have to reverse what was done. You have to admit, like, you no longer have access to me, enemy. Mm -hmm. I close up the breach that was giving you access to be, be an accuser. You have been accusing me, amen, of sin that my father did. So we have to silence that voice. Right. We silence it well with the blood. Amen. Yep. Amen. Upward, boy. Amen. <laughs> there's there's freedom and deliverance happening right now. Yes. 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 We want we want to encourage you. Any yes. anyone yes. out there who yes. is watching this, if there is something that the Lord has brought to light in your life yes. or remembrance in mm -hmm. your in your mm -hmm. life that you need to bring to the courts of yeah. heaven, yes. we want to encourage you to confess that. Mm -hmm. Let the Lord deliver you from that. Mm -hmm. He is merciful yes. and He will. He will forgive you. He will yes. forgive your ancestors and anything that was spoken yes. over you. If you're aware of that, we really encourage you to do that. Yes. Now. Now, <laughs> yes, don't, don't yes. put off to later what you can do now. It will break because yeah. he said, whatsoever you bind, you loose is already done. God yeah. is already, he's waiting. He's released the sound of this heart. This is what I want done in the earth. Remember he said, I, am, I, I made the heavens and the earth and the heavens is the Lord, but I've given the earth to man. We have stewardship. We were given that in the in the garden. Mm -hmm. We lost it, but Jesus came and gave it back to us. That's right. Amen. There's some and there's some limits because we didn't get the fullness of it. But you know what I mean. So we have a responsibility as kingdom priests to rule and govern here. Amen. The kingdom principle: be fruitful, what multiply, subdue, and have dominion. It is our responsibility mm -hmm. to bring God's will here. Let that kingdom be demonstrated here. That's right. We can't do it without being connected to Him. What by the Spirit of God. Right. Amen. And it all starts with. Yeah. Prayer. Right, yeah, because <laughs> prayer is to get you yeah. in fellowship. When this, the word communion means to have a sharing or having in common, amen. Prayer is, you know, if we're not uh, experiencing God in prayer, mm -hmm. then we're not praying effectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There has to be an experience. That is a konania, amen. Mm -hmm. There has to be something that we are learning and we are moving in the secrets of the kingdom are being revealed. Yes. So good. That's so, so good. We, we talked about um, so, some prayer to break yes. some strongholds, yes. some generational curses. Yes. What other types of prayer are there? You know, you have warfare prayer. And then you can, God will give, it's good to play for wisdom. He said in, in what, uh, Proverbs seven fourteen uh, around that area, he says, uh, call wisdom your sister mm. in understanding your mm -hmm. kinswoman. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord let me know, he says, wisdom speaks, understanding answers and knowledge performs. So good. And sometimes when we hear the word perform, we think about the world. Yeah. But I remember when Mary came to Elizabeth mm -hmm. and she began to declare, my God, that she was carrying the Savior. And Elizabeth said, there shall be a performance. There shall be a demonstration 
of the Spirit's power. So God is a demonstrator. He wants to perform his word. Yeah. He will perfect. He will, wants to perform it because he wants people to see his good works mm -hmm. and what and glorify mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. through the believer, through the church. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to make some things known to the principalities and powers. Yep. And it says what? The manifold wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. So that is our job to do that. So you have when, and I said that to say, when you're praying, there's levels of prayer. In uh, First Timothy, I'm going off my head now. <laughs> First Timothy, sometimes you can't stick with the notes. You're on fire, <laughs> right? In, in First Timothy, chapter two, verse one, Paul begins to give Timothy a blueprint of what prayer is. Mm -hmm. He said, "Let what supplication, prayers." intercessions and giving of thanks will be made for all men, yeah. those in position, authority, and in, in the kings, so what? So we can live a peaceable and quiet life. Why? Because he wants everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth and what be saved. This thing is bigger than <laughs> you just talking to God and asking God. This thing is connected to nations. Yeah. People's souls are weighed in a balance based Amen. on your obedience That's to pray. That's right. Hallelujah. Don't look at prayer, Lord. I need to just pray. Look at prayer. There's, 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 there's dimensions in the spirit that we're going in because mm. we sit in heavenly places. So in that one verse, see that supplication, that word is deasis in Greek. Okay. That means your petition. Amen. You're letting something be made known to God. You're crying out. That's a personal thing. Amen. Yeah. But the next thing, the prayers is called prosuke. And I'm giving you the Greek so you know these are different types of prayer. What does he say? Because there's an advancement in prayer. There's a progression, amen? Faith to faith, glory. We're going somewhere in God. Amen. <laughs> amen. We're not just amen. staying here, but we're going into realms of God. Why? Because prayer builds an altar and opens up heaven. Yeah. When you build an altar unto the Lord, it, the heavens have to open up. And then there's angelic visitation and there's revelation. I'm, I know this is my place in God. <laughs> so, here we go. so now that I have become, I have petitioned God, amen. Now I'm praying that prayers to God, that a D, uh, prosuke means prayers to God, but it also means prayers to man. I can't get into all the scripture. You're going to have to search it. <laughs> but you know the parable we talks about a friend went to a friend at night, amen. Mm -hmm. That's pers that's uh, prosuke. He, he went on behalf of a friend. So he went to somebody to ask of them. There was a petition to that person. Mm -hmm. So we can pray to God, but we also can ask a request of a person that has that, that resource, amen, to meet our needs. Mm -hmm. So now that I have petitioned God, now I have prayers to God, but that 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 uh, uh, prosuke also means a place of prayer. And it's in Acts, amen. You become, so you move from a petition to become a place of prayer. What do you mean? You become a, a, a vessel where God now can release an assignment to you yeah. so that you can pray on somebody else's behalf. Yeah. Amen. So now in that third uh, intercession, it's called usus. It means, amen, a setting up of a meeting. You become a mediator in the spirit. Amen. So we are moving from a natural realm to a, le a legal realm. Now you become an amen. You're, you're, you're getting that which opposes God and you're bringing a meeting between that which opposes him and God so that God can inflict his will or give them his purpose over their life. So now I have petitioned God. I've become a place of prayer. Now I'm partnering with God. Amen. So Hallelujah. Good. So, so good. there are rounds of prayer. You're moving in this thing. So now you get to Eucharistia, which is praise. He said, let praise and pray. Mm. Thanksgiving be made. Because now you're saying everything that I've asked and everything that I've done, now I'm coming to agreement that you have already heard me when I pray. Yep. So Eucharistia yep. is now that kononia. It's the communion. Now I've done all that. Now I'm coming together with God. Mm -hmm. I'm experiencing God in prayer. Yeah. Amen. Because it's different. Uh, there's a difference between ministering to people and then ministering to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you look at Martha, Martha was ministering to people, but Mary was ministering with That's God. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. You got to be careful that you don't miss ministering to God right. by ministering to people. You can be so busy and you'll miss the visitation. Yeah. Hallelujah. So <laughs> and sometimes that visitation can happen at 3 a.m. Come on. Come on. Come on. You That's miss right. it. So. Yeah. And that helps see that, that uh, prayer, the different types of prayer, different levels yeah, of prayer. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for breaking it down. Yeah. So can you okay. share with us how, how can we develop in our prayer? Okay. Um, and this is for anybody. When you really, uh, prayer is, is very, uh, uh, when I say tricky, when, when you're getting someone that don't know God, however you talk to him, he receives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm really taught. This is really for a believer, a person that's really growing and they know the basics of salvation. Does that make sense? I like to put that as out there because some people think I, I'm not, what is that? So when you're just talking to God, God hears you. When right. your heart is saying, I really want God. I don't know God, but I want God. You don't have to worry about all that. Okay. Now, how do I increase my prayer life? You got to get in the word. Yeah. Because he said, what? 
When I hear my word, which is my will, then I answer. Okay. My biggest struggle, let me tell you, uh, when God gave me his will, his way, and his word, there's a uh, testimony behind that. The Lord, before I knew ministry, the Lord began to deal with me about some things. And he said to me, you love my word. You want to do my will, but you don't want to do it my way. Yeah. Mm. He began to show me that. And the reason why I didn't want to do it God's way is not because I wanted to rebel, but I saw the price I would have to pay. Mm. And I said, I don't want to go that way, God. Even Jesus said, listen, if this cup can pass, can we do it another way? Right. But it was just the humanity side of Christ. Let's not get it twisted now. We knew that God, Jesus was going to get it done. Right. But that he wanted to show humanity side so we understand that we have a great high priest that can't be, you know what I'm saying, can yep. be touched. Mm -hmm. So this thing is strategic. So God began to deal with me about the way. Okay. Now God will answer prayers. And then almost the way we want to answer prayer. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why I say it's kind of tricky here. Yeah, right. <laughs> but isn't it always better? The way of the always. Lord is perfect. And his always. works are done what in righteousness. So no matter how God answers or work the work, it's always right. Yeah. It's always right. So we're going to have to trust the heart of God when we don't even understand the hand of God. And so Fair. God began to show me, get in my word. Because when you're praying my word, you are declaring and decreeing what I've already purposed for the earth. So when you're talking back to God, you pray his word. The more word you have in you, it's explosive. Mm, Amen. Yeah. Because you're releasing truth. Ah, and truth has to take root and grow up. Yeah. Amen. What, what is the, 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 the primary uh, purpose of the agricultural system? God deals with agriculture. We've got the tree, the garden, of, you know, the tree of knowledge and yes. evil. you got the garden. You have all the, the agricultural system system is key not only spiritually but naturally mm -hmm. and then why because it sustains life and it deals with growth and productivity mm -hmm. agriculture mm -hmm. so when you are praying that word you are producing you are bringing forth amen that which looks like god so when he looks right. down he sees himself yeah he has to step in and aim and get involved <laughs> yeah. in things, right because it's him so yeah. the word is key mm -hmm. amen and i wrote something else down that and i want to make sure i don't miss it miss, miss that but it is the word and it was something else I had said. Uh, let me move on. So you, the word in you, when you have the word and you're seeking the way of God and the will of God and the word of God, it has to bring forth everything that looks like God. So right. the key is a prayer, a, a, a life of word. You can't lose because a word operates in wisdom. Then God will begin to open up secrets, things that were locked up to us, and he'll begin to reveal them. And then you'll move in, in from the logos to the rhema. Mm. You be the revealed word. Now that word, you know what I'm saying? That, that declared word. Amen. That has to demonstrate. <laughs> so you talked about a, a lifestyle of prayer. Mm -hmm. So what is a, the difference between a lifestyle of prayer and a prayer ministry? Okay. So a lifestyle. So we're all, you said, uh, men should always pray. And I think, right. Amen. Um, uh, there, Jesus led the, the example of praying, how we should pray. So let me go here. I want to make sure I, I hit something. Okay. Okay, this lifestyle of prayer. And it says to pray without ceasing. What God is saying, we're not always walking around, you know, robotics, praying. But he's saying whenever you pray, whenever that opportunity, he says what in Luke, uh, the chapter when his disciples saw him after he finished praying, teach us how to pray. He said, when you pray. So we're expected to pray. As a believer, because remember, prayers to get you to experience God, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We get to experience him, God. We experience it, experience him also in the fellowship of his suffering, but in asking and also receiving an assignment. That mm -hmm. just that's a part of our lifestyle. So we're commanded to pray, and felt because it's about fellowship, right? right. You mm -hmm. cannot have a, a solid foundation in this walk without prayer. Prayer is the blueprint. Yes. Okay. So now you have this. And so you have a lifestyle. Every believer is called to the lifestyle. There are some that God will create a greater passion and an unction to pray. Mm -hmm. They would take on assignments. Mm -hmm. Then you know, okay, now, because ministry basically means what? To serve. Mm -hmm. So now I'm serving in that capacity as a mediator here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I am continuing the work of Christ, right? He said, listen, disciples, I got to go because the spirit got to come. Because right. I'm with you, but now I'm going to be in you. Yeah. So they didn't understand a lot, but you, he wants to be in us. That's how he's, uh, we do greater works. People think, oh, I'm going to do greater works. You're doing greater works because the greater is in you. Yeah, ain't you. He's doing the great work through you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so you become, <laughs> you become that place where Jesus is doing that work. And he will release a passion and an unction that you just, you, you receive assignments. And God, he, like I was, when I was 11, God had called me to pray. 
I was learning prayer, experiencing God through worship. Because worship and prayer, prayer are married. Praise and prayer are married. They're not separated. Yeah. They're all about communion, koinonia, experiencing yeah. God. Mm -hmm. So as I got older, that passion was there. As I matured in Christ, I'm like, okay, God, what can sign that you got for me today? What is on your heart? Because remember, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He wants what's done already there, here. That's right. There's a prototype that we have to find out what it is that God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. So there are some who are called there to have a grace to pray lower in lower hours, lower times, and they just love the sound of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that God was calling me to that ministry because mm -hmm. I carry burdens. Yeah. Intercessors carry burdens. Right. And until you pray it through, it won't be released. And a lot of times we don't understand what it is. We would even uh, equate it to depression. Oh, God, why am I feeling this weight? I saw your... That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's true. That's, that's a good way to put think, it. But ask God, why am I feeling this way? Because we'll take on something that God said, I need to transfer it to you. Mm. There's a stewardship. He said, my yoke is what? Easy and what? My burden is light. light. And that lets us know there's a burden. You can't get all away from burden. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And so we, yeah. we, he'll give us an anointing to pray that thing through and we'll yeah. see breakthrough. So you'll know uh, by doing your relationship with God and the growth of ministry uh, in, in just personal ministry, mm. the ministry of reconciliation, if you're called mm. to a, a broader, I'm going to call it another level of prayer. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I love just the way that you broke it down yeah. and knowing that prayer is your way of communicating with yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always have to be um, so disciplined, uh -huh. where it's, uh, I have to go here at this time right. and this long. Mm -hmm. And it's an all day thing. Yes. You know, I do it when I'm driving in yes. my car, when I'm uh, at work, mm -hmm. when any time you can commune with the Lord mm -hmm. wherever you are. So mm -hmm. there is no perfect mm -hmm. place every place is perfect for prayer yes. every place yes. and he always listens it says in malachi 3 16 that when we speak of the lord mm -hmm. and definitely to the lord that he leans in and he listens mm -hmm. so he's always listening to our hearts yes. and you said um when you were talking about mm -hmm. you could pray mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. and the lord hears your mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. he knows your heart mm -hmm. uh, is there such a thing as a wrong prayer it is James talks about praying amiss, double-mindedness, praying for something in a sense that you're lusting for it and it's not supposed to be yours. Mm. Amen. And then if we don't pray, not believe me, he said, he that don't have faith, don't, you can't expect to get anything from God. Mm. So there are some things that will stop us from getting that. So it's definitely about having the right heart posture. And remember also that God is in the business of answering prayers. So if there aren't prayers, he won't be able to answer them. That's right. Well, we want to thank you so much for being here today yeah. and taking time to enlighten our community on prayer and everything it encompasses. So thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you. And we thank you for joining us on another episode of Radiant Pearls Ministries. And remember, you have strength, you have hope, and you have loveliness. We'll see you next time. In Radiant Pearls Ministries.